Why do women defend other women even when those other women are wrong? This is a great question. And it's something that I have a lot of experience with. <clears throat> Speaking uh, Red Pill Truth online, you know, talking out against feminism. There's a lot of... Um, negative feedback uh, from women, obviously. So, you know, I get a lot of people attacking me, a lot of detractors, a lot of people saying, no, that's not true, you know, but um, it's never really based on anything that's solid. It's always just like, either it's just straight up attacking me with no end, the only purpose is to attack me or they try to debate with me and that really never works all they all they, all they ever really bring up is not from my experience i don't do that right um they'll just, or, or they'll say like who hurt you or you're an incel <laughs> or you're a misogynist you're a woman hater or you know you just you just haven't found the right type of girl yet so it's like, are we all wrong? You know, is, is everybody who takes the red, red pill wrong? Is everybody who accepts the red pill truths wrong? Is our experience wrong? Well, I'll say this. Um, some people get lucky. Some people find a, a quality, quality girl. But a lot of us don't. And we deal with the same things. And this is why we speak what we speak, right? So... I mean, female behavior is just female behavior. That's just the way they, that's the way they behave. We all, we all witness it. We go to parties, we go to bars, we go to college, we go to high school. We see it, we, 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 we interact. There's whole, you know, dating systems and uh, pickup artist systems that are catered to attraction, building attraction. What's the foundation of all those things? You have to be a higher value man. Okay, so what does that mean? That means females want a high value man. Is there anything inherently wrong with that? Yes, absolutely. Why? Because it's not love. Hypergamy is not love. Choosing the highest value male is not love. Okay. Now it's one thing to say, oh, you know what? I'm not attracted to bummy guys. Okay, I'm not attracted to bummy girls necessarily, right? That's one thing. But there's a difference between that and going all the way to the other side and saying, I'm not even gonna date you if you don't make six figures. I'm not even gonna consider you as a, as a potential mate for love or a relationship if you don't have a house, if you don't have, right? If you're not paying a mortgage things like that, right? And that's what it is today. So women always take it to that, that minimum and say, well, why should I date a bummy guy with no job? I'm not saying you have to, right? But see, you take that concept and you run with it and you go all the way to the other end and, and you, you might say, oh, I don't want a bummy guy with no job. But what it really is, you, you want a guy with six figures. So you might not go you know, all the way to the left and saying, yeah, I'm not gonna date a bummy guy and, and I wouldn't ask you to. But, but you won't stay anywhere in the middle either. You won't date the guy who's got a decent, medium paying job, right? That's only last ditch effort. You're gonna go for the gusto. This is female nature. You're gonna get the best you can. And what is that? That's, that's just playing your options, right? Why is that a bad thing? There's a bad thing because you're not looking for love. <laughs> you're looking for love with something else you're looking for love plus all these extra benefits you're looking for love sure but you all but you want the bit you want the benefits if the benefits aren't there then you're not going to call it love if the guy doesn't have a house if he's not making good money you're not going to call that you, you're not going to call it love you're going to be ah you know what i think i can do better this guy's cool and all but he's just got this low paying job i think i could do better Anybody who has experience in the dating game knows that this is what this is what it really is. This is the truth, right? But if you go online and you say this truth, you talk about hypergamy, you talk about monkey branching, you talk about, you know, always looking for the bigger, better deal, always, you know, open hypergamy, keeping your options open, 
right? This is female nature. But if you talk about that online, you're going to have women come out of the woodworks to attack you. No, we're not like that. Why do you hate women? You're a misogynist. You expect us to just, you know, choose some bum. You uh, All these things, right? Why are they doing that? Let's get behind the psychology of why that happens. The reason why that happens is because there's power in choice. There's power in their choice. They have power of choice. And that's what they have in society, right? Th that's the essence of that reaction towards me telling the truth about hypergamy, me telling the truth about you know, female, females exercising their options, this, that, and the third. They attack that because they know that if I speak that truth, you see, it educates people to understand female nature, which, which to some degree, to whatever degree I have reach, it limits their power. Because knowledge is power. If you give men knowledge and say, hey, this is how the game is, this is how these women are, you're freeing minds. You're freeing, you're freeing up men to, hey, wait a minute. This is a game and I see what game you're playing. Wait a minute, I see, I'm playing into that. Me being so ambitious, me uh, trying to get the best house I can, trying to get the most money I can so I can get a good quality woman is really just playing into her ambition, right? Because there's always gonna be a better house. There's always gonna be a, uh, a guy with more money. There's always gonna be a better looking guy. There's always gonna be a guy who has more status than you. You're not gonna, you're not gonna win that game. <laughs> in, in reality, you can't win that game, right? And it's rigged. The game is rigged anyways. Because, you know, looks, money, status matter. So whatever extent that you work your life so hard for, right? You can only go to a certain extent. That's the extent of your natural talent. That's the extent of your natural strength, of your natural power, okay? And when that, caps you have maybe some options but it, the reason why i say it's rigged is because what are your options your options are used up women who jump off the cock carousel and now they're ready to date you now they're ready to marry you only because you have that house only because you have the, the amount of money that you have relative to your station in life you see and you're gonna get so you, you you're kind of going to do the same thing. You're going to get the best woman you can for the amount of money that you have, for how cool your nest is, a.k.a. your house, right? So you see, it's a weird, it's a weird trick, right? It's a weird trick. Now, when I speak these things, women attack me. Why? Why? Because they know that by educating men, I can free them from that that cycle. I can free them from that system, okay? So, so they can start saying, hey, wait a minute. I need to look for something more than just a hot ass, uh, you know, attractive woman. I need to understand female nature. Hey, wait a minute. She only wants me for my house. She only wants me for my mortgage, whatever. This is why, this is why divorce happens. This is why because there's not love when you don't have love when you don't have a proper relationship in the beginning of a relationship it might last for a while because she has an agenda i gotta get pregnant i gotta have kids i need the best quality man in order to do that once that happens things are going to change she might not have sex with you as much she might not want to kiss you and be intimate as much okay she still wants your money she still wants the security you provide for her but she's already got what she wanted. Why is she going to continue to give you intimacy, continue to give you sex? She is now in a, in a privileged position and you're in a precarious position because if you say, damn, honey, you know, why can't we have sex? Why can't, you know, why don't you want to kiss or hug anymore? She's going to say, oh, you don't respect me. All you want is sex. Woo, woo, woo. She might divorce you. You see? So it's like a, you, you're, you're kind of in check, you know, a, a game of chess, right? You're in check in that scenario because she has the advantage. The advantage is, is that she is in a privileged position because she can divorce you and take half your money at that point. Once she moves in, the laws benefit her and she knows this. Women know this better than anyone else. Women know this better than men. Men often 
have rose-colored glasses because they think that, you know, oh, she loves me, right? No, no, she, she loves what you do for her. See, this is a red pill truth that's hard for men to swallow. She loves what you do for her. She loves your mortgage. She loves the security your house provides. And she's going to exploit that until maybe either she finds a bigger, better deal or she decides, okay, I have my kids. Now I'm going to go back to the carousel. This happens. And who's going to fund that? Who's going to fund when she decides to leave you and go and goes back to the cock care cell? You are. You're going to fund that because that's what the state says. The state says when there's irre irre irreconcilable differences, the woman gets half. It's only fair because it's a sexist law. <laughs> okay, that's just a fact. That's just a fact. You are going to pay for her fuck buddies after she's done having kids with you. And at whatever age she decides it's time to go, you know, whatever age she decides it's time to exit, you're going to have to pay for the kids out, uh, the kids child support. You're going to have to pay her alimony and that's it. You see, so she knows this and, and, and guys are guys who are blue pill think, Oh no, that wouldn't happen. Women want love. Really? Do they? Do they? Because from what I see and from what so many other men see, they want the biggest, best deal. They want the BBD. They want the guy with the most money, could provide them the best house, give them the most security so that they can have kids and have a nice little life. And again, if she decides at any time, you know what? I've been with this guy for 10 years. We had kids. The kids are, you know, the kids are in middle school now. I'm getting kind of bored, you know. They're not little children anymore. They were fun for a while. And now they're always at school. They're hanging out with their friends. I'm bored. I'm going to go get some dick. Okay, that's it. You're, either you're getting cheated on behind her, behind your back. Or she's just going to say, you know what? This is, I'm tired, of, I'm tired of your dick. I'm tired of putting up with you. I'm tired of doing all this. And now I'm going to go find whatever it is that I want. Passion, lust, whatever it is. This happens all the time, man. Divorce is at 50% for a reason. Okay. There's a fundamental flaw in the system. And the system is female nature because females are the ones who do the choosing. Now, this is where men are at fault. This is where men have a psychological problem and a social problem because they don't realize their own power. They don't realize that they have power over the dating market. That they have power over the marriage market. Men don't have power over the sexual market. I'll, you know, I can admit that. That's true. Women hold uh, all the power over the sexual market. That's just a fact. But over the marriage market and the dating market, that's where men have power. Now, you see, I tell a woman that. I, I go online and I, or excuse me, I, I tell, I, I speak that truth to social media and women come out of the woodwork and say, Hey, wait a minute. You can't say that. You can't tell men they have power. You can't tell men that they can't choose us because that's, you're a misogynist. If you do that, Oh, I'm not good enough. You think I'm too fat. Oh, you know, I'm, you know, all, all, all the things, right? We say, oh, we don't want to date a fat woman. Now you're a bigot. We say, oh, we don't want to date a gold digger. Now you're a woman hater. You see? So why do women do this? Why do women... Why do women stand up for other women even though women are wrong? Why? It's very simple. Because they have power in... in in this wrong they have power in this in this lie that real love is true. no it's not real love again when a woman chooses a man for his security his mortgage his status his money that is not real love what about that is real love it's not loyal it's not special it's just an exchange of resources for for intimacy for you know, for kids. Now, hey, if the man understands that, if he knows that, some men do, not all men do. A lot of men get duped, and this is how men get hurt. This is how men, this is why men commit suicide. Okay. Some men do. Some men understand that. You know what? Yeah, it's my money. Yeah, you know, I provide a house for her. It's, it's, it's what men do. You know, that's I've met a lot. But I've met plenty of men who believe that. Hey, if you, if you know that that's what it is and you're willing to take the risk if she takes you to divorce court, okay, that's on you. But my burden, my goal is to educate. Hey, this is female nature, all right? And when I do this, what happens? 
again, women come out of the woodwork. The simps come out of the woodwork. The white knights, the beta, beta male feminists. Hey, man, you just hate women. Hey, man, this is... Right? So, why? Because when women have power... When women have that kind of power, they can... They got the whole full control over the dating market. They got the full whole control over the marriage market. They want to consolidate all the power. So yes, yeah, somebody coming in and saying, hey, this is the truth. This is what's really going on. I'm a threat. I'm like a I'm like a fox in the hen house. You see? I'm I'm hated. Believe me, I'm hated. <laughs> and I've taken the brunt of it for years. And I don't see many, many men doing what I do. I don't see many men speaking the truths that I speak. And I'm okay with being labeled a woman hater, misogynist. I'm okay with that because I know what I am. I'm a truth speaker. That's all. I speak the truth. Have I been hurt by women? Absolutely. That's how I got educated. <laughs> That's how I learned about their nature. Right? I've been hurt by lots of them. And it was consistent. And there was a pattern. The pattern that... I was hurt in the way that I was hurt. I learned that it was a pattern. This is how I figured out female nature, right? Now, of course, other men came along. MGTOW came about. Of course, you got PUA, right? We got the Red Pill. We got Mansphere, Rolo Tomasi, Donovan Sharp, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All these guys come out, you know, solidifying our experience. All the MGTOW men with their experiences, guys are speaking out. And it's risky to speak out. It, you, know, you know, in a sense, we, we get attacked. I've been called a rapist. I've been called a pedophile. And none of it is true. That There's no basis for any of it. Why do they do that? Because they're trying to attack me. They're trying to discredit me. They're trying to hurt me. They're trying to scare me. It's a scare tactic. Oh, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to message your family. Don't you know that what you're saying is, is bigoted? Don't you know that you're a woman hater? What if I screenshot all these messages and uh, message your family? Believe me, they do. They screenshot all the messages so they can come back around later on and say, oh, but you said this. Look, I got the screenshot. Right. These people are systematically evil. OK. Now, these are people that we see every day. These are young women. These are young men, right, that we see in here. And, and it's like, why? What do you benefit from it? There's power. You would think, why don't you just go find love? Why don't you just find a quality person? Because they want their cake and eat it too. They don't really want love. They want the best life for themselves. Many times that entails, you know, a bunch of loose sex before they hit 25, 30, and they decide they want to settle down. Again, all kinds of problems that come out of that. If you listen to my channel, you know what those problems are. I don't have to re it's like this is what I talk about every day. This is what I this is what I live. This is what I know. Why? Why do they do this? Because it benefits them. There's power and there's leverage not only in the feminist victim narrative, right? This this lie that they're oppressed. But there's power in keeping men stupid <laughs> there's power in keeping men ignorant and naive and within that power they can work a lot they can get a lot right now on the other hand we're fighting the basic structure of society we're fighting the fabric of society right what is our society built upon in the west capitalism <laughs> okay what's the what's the motivation for capitalism to live the best life. So this plays into female nature, unfortunately. It plays into female nature. So women are vicariously living through the man. Women are choosing the highest quality man to give them the best life. I'm simply here to tell you that's not love. I'm simply here to tell you that that life is it might be fun. Like, it's cool going to restaurants. It's cool having a nice house. Like, that's cool. I want those things. But if I don't have love, what's the point, right? Because at the end of the day, I want to lay my head down. And I want to be intimate with a quality woman. I want to kiss a quality woman. I want to love a quality woman. I want to share my life with a woman who really loves me. Not a woman 
Not a woman who's going to leave me if I lose my job. Not a woman who's going to leave me if she finds a, a man who makes more money than I do, who's better looking than I am, who has a nicer house than I do, who has more social status than I do. No, I don't want that. That's not real. But how we've looked, how can we find it? Where's that woman, you see? And this is why the Bible says a, you know, a quality woman is harder to find than, precious gem, than gold and precious jewels. It's harder to find because female nature is fundamentally dependent on man and and their nature wants them to find the highest quality man now many men will say many people will say what's wrong with that that's just biology that's just nature again i have to go back to the fact that that's not love like if you want to just say hey yeah this is my wife you know i pay the bills and we're intimate and that's it like okay but don't say, this is my wife, I love my wife, and she loves me. Don't say that. You can't say that. Because love is loyalty. And if she's not loyal to you when you don't have a mortgage, when you don't have a house, when you don't have those nice things, then you don't have love. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. And this, is, this has been my argument from day one. And this is always the essence of my argument when I when I put things forth online etc and again like I said women come out of the woodwork and they fight me why because they benefit from it they benefit from you know having that privilege they benefit from men not being smart not being keyed into the red pill they benefit from it now us in the red pill we've got this life we've got this burden to bear uh, to carry because we took the red pill. When Neo left the matrix, there wasn't nothing nice, right? He had, a, he, had a, he had a condo, he had a nice little job, right? His, his life was okay, but he wanted something more. He was fed up, he was, he was uh, unsatisfied with his life. So he wanted something more, and that's, that's when you get the truth, is when you're unsatisfied. Oh man, this isn't working, why isn't this working? You know, now, now some people, they're enjoying the fake steak. Some people enjoy the fake steak. They don't want the truth. They don't want the red pill. Some people are like, hey man, you know, I worked, I got, I got at, least, at least I got a woman. It's like, dude, I, may, may, maybe I don't blame you to a certain extent. Like, I don't have a woman because I got high standards. <laughs> I don't have a woman because, you know, I took the red pill because I'm telling the truth. And I, I know female nature, so I know how to vet. I know how to vet women and this is a this is a problem it's like i might be alone for the rest of my life because i'm not gonna get a good job etc i'm not gonna get a get a nice car and pay a good mortgage just so i can have a woman because that's not what i view real love right so the the path that i walk is somewhat of a lonely one it's, it's a painful one now there are men other men out there like me other red pill men okay so hey man you know it's the red pill is a hard truth to swallow the red pill the red pill road that you walk on after you take the red pill is a hard it's a hard life man i you know the truth is hard the lie is what's easy this is why so many people choose the lie because it's easier oh all i gotta do is lie and i can get these benefits okay let me do that this is why women aren't real because you know they don't really want real love oh man i might have to suffer oh man i gotta really do this for real i can't just manipulate my my way into this prince charming who pays for everything and i got a nice house and a nice life this is what they want this is why many men and many women will never experience real love they'll never experience real love because they're, they, they've given it up they've chosen that fake stake they don't want the truth. They don't want to say, okay, I got to, you know, look at myself and self-crit, right? I got to look at myself and say, how can I improve? I got to look at, you know, objectively look at the world and say, you know, what is the real truth here? How are men and women really treating each other? Is feminism really the truth or is it just bullshit, right? People don't want to do that, especially women because gynocentrism, they're coddled from a young age. They're not told that they have to think and, and, and be real and really take, you know, take life seriously. You're a woman. All you got to do is be pretty. Here, put on this makeup, wear these sexy clothes, go out and get the highest value man you can. 
And actually, that's a frustration to many women. That's a frustration to many women because they get used a lot. And yet they don't change. They don't change. They're still using sex to lure men in. They're not having better character. They're not telling the truth. They're not being real with themselves for who they really are. They're not doing that. Instead, they're fighting against guys like me. Oh, you guys are just incels. You red pill guys. Woo, woo, woo. They don't want to tell the truth. They don't want to um, speak reality. They don't want to live in, in, in the real world. They don't want to take the red pill. They want to stay in that blue pill world. They want to stay in the matrix. And what is the matrix? Oh, me, me, me. Everything's about me. Gynocentrism, solipsism. Me, me, me. It's all about me. What are you going to do for me? You know, do you have a job? Do you have a good job? Okay, you got a good job, but is it better than this guy's job? What's the best I can get? What's, what's a good house I can have? And, I, you know, I live in an affluent area. Right? I, I live in a high-class area in Seattle. There's a lot of great houses. Man, man the, the standard and the bar is really high. Okay, so it ain't just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to find love. That's all good until you realize, oh, shit, he can't take care of me. How are we going to, how, how are we going to have, I've literally had girls say that to me in the past when, when we're dating, how are you going to take care of me? How are you going to, how are you going to afford to take care of us? Oh, see, love is all good up until the guy can't afford it. Then we see what it really is. Then we see the real truth, the real truth, which is that, you know, love has a dollar sign on it. Love has a, love has a dollar sign on it. Um... You, you gotta afford it. You gotta be able to afford it. You want love? Pay for it. Because <laughs> that's the real reality. That's what the matrix really is. You want love? Pay for it. Okay? And so many women will just disagree. No, that's not true. My, my husband was, was, was broke when I met him. Like, maybe. Maybe. But that's not most women. Okay? Maybe, uh, maybe that happened. But you're a rare exception. Believe me, you're a rare exception. <laughs> And many other men will vouch for me on that. Am I saying it's impossible? No, it's possible. It's possible to find one who really loves you for who you are. Is it probable? Absolutely not. Not probable. It's not the way it is. It's not the way life is. Oh, you just have to be, just be yourself. Just be yourself and someone will love you for who you really are. Okay, yeah, well, I've got, you know, decades of experience that that does not work. Okay, what worked is when I acted like an asshole. What worked is when I acted like I had high value. What worked was when I acted like, you know, I was fucking girls left and right. That's what worked. Was when I was when I treated women like crap, was when I acted like a jerk. That's what worked. So female biology is evident. <laughs> and this whole lie, oh, you just need to find the right one. Bullshit. Bullshit. They all want money. They all want the bad boy. They all want the highest value guy. If, and if they can't get the bad boy, they can't get the bad boy with money, then they're going to settle for the beta boy with money. They all want money. Money is the common denominator in all relationships. What keeps a woman around? Money. Period. The end. You could say that's black-pilled. It's just, it's just the truth. Whatever pill it is, red pill, black pill, it's just the truth. You know. I wish I could be white-pilled and say, no, things are going to be different. I'll find a different one. I spent years and years and years and years doing that. Years and years and years uh, searching, seeking. Wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough. Didn't make enough money. Not good looking enough. Not cool enough. Not, not popular enough. All these things. It, you know, looks, money, status is the cornerstone of what women want. Looks, money, status. And when you speak these truths, women come out of the woodwork and attack you. Just a fact. All right, guys. That's about it for me. Thanks for listening. Jay Lee, Northwest Podcast. Peace.